Documents also reveal new information about fired National Security Advisor, retired Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, who this week asked Congress for immunity in exchange for any testimony about Russian meddling in the U.S. election. Flynn failed to report thousands of dollars in speaking fees he had received from the Russian government-owned propaganda channel RT for this appearance alongside Russian President Vladimir Putin, as well as for paid speeches by a Russian airline and a Russian cybersecurity company. Flynn's lawyer claims he was fired before he could complete his initial financial disclosure forms. I'm joined now by one of the congressmen leading the probe into Russia's activities in the U.S. election, Re Representative Adam Schiff, who serves as the ranking Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee. Congressman Schiff, thanks so much for joining us. It's good to be with you, Jake. So let me ask you about General Flynn. He says, his lawyer says at least, that he's willing to testify before your committee if he's given immunity. President Trump seemed to voice support for this, tweeting, quote, Mike Flynn should ask for immunity in that this is a witch hunt excuse for big election loss by media and Dems of historic proportion. Flynn's lawyer says that General Flynn has a story to tell congressmen. What would it take for the committee to give him immunity? Well, I think we start out with a very healthy skepticism. Uh, we know from the filings that were dumped by the White House on Friday uh, that General Flynn failed to report the uh, money that he received from that RT propaganda arm of the Kremlin as well as two other Russian entities. Uh, we also have requested the background security documents uh, that General Flynn filled out to find out whether he similarly failed to disclose uh, work that he was doing uh, as uh, a financial agent of a foreign power or, or receiving financial support from a foreign power. Uh, and of course there's the issue of whether General Men, uh, Flynn made false statements uh, that would also expose him to liability. So there's a lot we need to learn before entertaining anything like this. Uh, there's a lot we need to learn from other witnesses. But I start out, I think, with a very healthy skepticism. A skepticism that he has anything worth sharing? Well, what is the skepticism about? Well, the skepticism is, you know, we'll need to consult with the Justice Department. They obviously have a lot of equities here. Uh, we don't want to do anything that will interfere in any case that the Justice Department may decide to bring. Uh, we also have to determine whether he really can add value to our investigation, whether we need him to learn information we can't learn from other sources. So it's very early, I think, even to be considering this. Uh, there's a lot more work that we need to do, and, and I think we're properly bringing a degree of skepticism along with us. What did you think about President Trump? tweeting about the immunity deal. Some of the president's critics suggested that maybe he was signaling to the Justice Department or the FBI that they should uh, offer General Flynn such a, such a deal. Uh, you know, I, the, the president's pretty transparent in his tweets. I think he wanted to get across a message that uh, he's not afraid of what General Flynn has to say and basically daring the Congress to give him immunity. Uh, and then if we make a judgment that, no, we shouldn't be giving him immunity, the president can say we don't want his story to come out. So I think it was a strategic move by the president and a pretty transparent one. On Friday, you traveled to the White House to view uh, these documents that Chairman Nunes, uh, your Republican counterpart, has discussed. Um, and Nunes says that they suggest the raising of issues, issues that he has about incidental surveillance of Trump advisors, maybe even the president himself. The president has said he feels somewhat vindicated by what Nunes has said about these documents, although Nunes has said they do not show what the president claimed, a wiretap of Trump at Trump Tower. But now that you've seen these documents, can you understand why Chairman Nunes, Nunes uh, might have some issues uh, with the surveillance that was going on? Well, I can't go into the contents of the documents, Jake. Uh, I can't say I don't agree with the chairman's characterization, which is exactly why it's so important you don't share documents with just one person or even two uh, people. They need to be shared with both the full committees. But the most important thing people need to know about these documents is not classified. Uh, and it's a couple things. Uh, first, the uh, deputy assistant to the White House uh, informed me when I went to see them that these are exactly the same materials that were shown to the chairman. Uh, now, this is a very interesting point. How does the White House know that these are the same materials that were shown to the chairman if the White House wasn't aware what the chairman was being shown? Uh, and the second point was also made to me, and this is, I think, was also underscored by Sean Spicer, uh, and that is, uh, it was uh, told to me by the deputy assistant that uh, these materials were produced in the ordinary course of business. Well, the question for the White House and for Mr. Spicer is the ordinary course of whose business? Uh, because if these were produced either for or by the White House, 
then why all the subterfuge? There's nothing ordinary about the process that was used here at all. Uh, and Jake, I think the answer may come from the president himself. And you can say a lot of things about the president, but one thing you cannot say is he's not subtle. Uh, and I think his tweets tell the story. And the story is, look over there uh, at leaks and look over there at anything the Obama administration we can claim did wrong on incidental collection or anything else. But whatever you do, under no circumstances, look here at me or at Russia. Uh, I think that's really what's going on. Do you think that Chairman Nunes was part of an attempt to provide some sort of cover for the president's claim about Obama wiretapping him at Trump Tower, which obviously this does not prove, but to cover for that or an attempt to distract, as you're suggesting? Uh, it certainly is an attempt to distract and to hide the origin of the materials, to hide the White House hand. Uh, the question is, of course, why? Uh, and I think the, the answer to the question is this effort to uh, point the Congress in other directions, uh, basically say, don't look at me, don't look at Russia, there's nothing to see here. You know, I would tell people whenever they see the president use the word fake, it ought to set off alarm bells. Uh, and I, I think that's really uh, what's gone on here. Now, you signed a letter with Chairman Nunes about three weeks ago uh, asking the intelligence community about unmasking. That's when someone incidentally picked up in surveillance is named by official name and not just citizen A in an intelligence reports. I guess the question that Nunes is asking or suggesting that we should be asking in the media, who unmasked these Trump advisors and, and is it possible that any of this unmasking was being done for political reasons instead of for legitimate ones? Well, first of all, I can't talk about, uh, as I mentioned, the contents of any documents. So at this point, uh, I can't say whether anything was masked or unmasked uh, improperly. Uh, I can say this, in the ordinary course of what we do as an oversight committee, we look at exactly these issues. Uh, if the White House had any concern about whether minimization was used properly or unmasking was used properly or there was improper incidental collection or how it was handled, that is material that should be given to us in the ordinary course of affairs. It doesn't need to be done, uh, you know, by night through stealth at the White House. Uh, the only reason to do that, again, is if you want to hide where these materials are really coming from and who's behind it. Uh, and I think, you know, part of the reason why that was done is this effort to deflect attention from the Russia investigation, uh, to raise other issues, to e effectively create a cloud through which the public cannot see uh, what's at stake here. And what's at stake here is a foreign intervention in our election, a very serious issue about whether U.S. persons were involved, an investigation that's being conducted by the FBI into possible coordination with the Trump campaign. That is really, I think, among the most serious business the country has to do right now. Uh, and the White House seems to be doing everything it can to point in other directions and say, do not look here, there is nothing to see here. And the big issue, of course, is whether or not there was collusion among members of the Trump campaign or surrounding the Trump campaign, Trump advisors. Can you say definitively that there was collusion? There were people affiliated with the Trump campaign who were working with Russians to time the release of damaging information about Hillary Clinton that had been, that had been hacked either from John Podesta or the DNC? I don't think we can say anything definitively at this point. Uh, we are still at the very early stage of the investigation. Now, the only thing I can say is that it would be irresponsible for us not to get to the bottom of this. Uh, we, really need to do, we really need to find out exactly what the Russians did, because one of the most important conclusions that the intelligence community reached is that they are going to do this again to the United States. They're doing it already in Europe. So we can say you know, conclusively, this is something that needs to be thoroughly investigated, uh, but, but it's way premature to be reaching conclusions. Congressman Adam Schiff, Democrat of California, we thank you for your time today. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Jake.